Thank you, thank you for the introduction. My name is Ben Silver, um, and I am the chief uh, chief plugger in at Benzina Zero. And before we before we start, let's clear something up because some people don't know it. So we'll just clear it up. So Benzina is Italian for petrol. When you have no petrol, it kind of all starts to make sense. So people get confused because my name's Ben, and they think it's all that. So, Benzina Zero, what is Benzina Zero? Essentially, we are a global electric moped and scooter distributor. Uh, we are proudly Brisbane based and have been involved in the two wheeled motorcycle and scooter world for a very, very long period of time. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but one thing that we want to do is we want to be able to take a range of products globally, and we have some, uh, some other things that are part of what we do that makes us a little bit unique. So obviously the idea around electric mobility and obviously something like motor scooters and, and e-bikes that we were just chatting about before is they're incredibly accessible for a lot of people. There isn't the financial barriers to entry that we do have with higher, uh, higher expense motor vehicles. Um, and all these couples, sorry, and all these parts, um, all these vehicles equal a bigger part of mobility for everyone because some people can commute on a smaller vehicle or an e-bike or an e-scooter or an e-car. E so we, we talk about being able to do more for the environment, but really what we want to do is just create sustainability for the movement of people and goods. So it's not just, when we say sustainability, not just for the environment, but for the people themselves, because we all live in environments, we all have to live in built environments that want to be quiet and, and free from pollution. So there's a number of benefits obviously when we go to electric vehicles. I'm not going to run through all these at the moment because we're all very much across all of this. But I wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, about Joe and myself. So Joe started in the motor industry in 1987. I entered the motor industry in 2002. And I've known Joe for the best part of 20 years. In 1998, Joe started a series of standalone scooter shops. And when I say scooter, I mean moped and motor scooter. What we found was, is when scooters were sold in motorcycle dealerships, they were normally put down at the back and disregarded. And those customers actually deserved a much different user experience. One, where they were welcomed. And we did that with coffee. But we brought people in, created a safe environment. And over, a, over a number of years, we expanded from one shop to three shops and we were the largest seller of motor scooters in the southeast Queensland area. And up until the end of that business, we were very proud to say that we put 18,000 scooters onto the road in South East Queensland and fundamentally changed how people moved. Now we're trying to do, to do that, but on a global level and with electric. The way we do this is we are an Australian-based business and we want to export globally. So how we do this is we have centralised manufacturing. With the development of the product, we found a product that was similar but not what we wanted. We went through and made it what we wanted. And the big play we'll talk about, we'll show you the models that we do, but the big play is around the duo, and it's our halo bike. Normally the halo bike is the bike that is the fastest and the lariest and all those sort of things. For our bike, our halo unit is the most utilitarian, the one that has the most application. Because for far too long we see vehicles having one use. Anything that comes into my house has to have more than one use, and my bikes are the same. The other reason why we did, uh, have got uh, the manufacturing set up the way we have is from a scalability perspective. We have the ability to produce 1,400 duos a day with the factory setup that we have currently, and with what we're trying to achieve globally, we need to have the capacity, capacity to expand. That's the reason why we set up the way we have. So the Halo bike is a duo. We believe it can be as iconic in its shape as a Vespa. It's very different, but the thing is, the reason why this is, a, is unique to us is because all of a sudden with electric propulsion, we can have design that is different to what we've seen before. No longer are we trying to clothe a, a petrol engine or hire the drivetrain. We don't need to. By making it simpler, I think it looks pretty, but it's also got a whole lot of applications from carrying goods to people to even the surfboard that we have on our display today. We have two versions of the duo. We have the duo, which is our moped, which you can ride on a car license here. 
um, which we are, like, are fortunate to do in Australia. In Italy, you can ride that when you're 14. Okay? In New South Wales, you need a motorcycle license. We have the Duo Plus, which is the motorcycle license bike. Both of the vehicles, what we wanted to do is have adequate power, that means power that is comfortable to use for, for the majority of people, but we wanted to offer more range. We know that some people get anxious around that, and we also have some use cases that want to give us that sort of range. We've got applications from people who want to commute, but the people who want to do Uber Eats and fleet deliveries. Because we wanted to offer a range of vehicles, we brought in some supporting products. We developed the City, which is also a moped, which has those more, I'd say, classic style, um, classic style sort of scooter and scooter lines. That's our moped with a range of 80 kilometres. And we also have the Sport. Our model ethos was very simple. We wanted to offer a relatively concise range of product that offered a use case for a majority of people. We didn't want to have to bring in multiple models because the more we do that, the more we have to support it. And when I say by support, it means gives adequate after sales service and spare parts, uh, spare parts backup. The only thing that's a little unique here is that we also are, for the Australian part of our business, the importer of the cargo, which is a three-wheel Japanese-produced mo uh, motorcycle. It's unique because it leans. You might have seen some straight post bikes there, fixed, fixed bike. Ours actually leans the whole unit. Some, some other trikes actually lean, um, pivot from the middle, so for the whole unit leans. Like I said, the product that we offer is one part of our business, but there's two other really important, important elements that we have that um, we put together. The first one is the one square meter project. So obviously we're an Australian domicile business. We pay our tax here, but we wanted to do more here. Despite being global, we wanted to be able to make sure that we had a positive impact here. And we did that through this project. We partnered with Greenfleet, who are, who are here and supporting the event today. And every time we sell products, we regenerate land. Now we do that here because of two very simple reasons. One, we make a customer promise and we have to be transparent on what that promise is. We want to know it's actually getting done. And to, to use a partner like Greenfleet, it was a very simple choice. They've been around for a long time. They started in 1997. We also have the ability to have transparency on the projects and we know that the projects that are put in place are also guaranteed for a period of time, up to 100 years, to make sure that whatever's planted today will be here for the future, which is important. The, um, the other part about the One Square Meter project is, despite selling bikes into different parts of the world, we get the net benefit in Australia. So of the duo, we landed our first container of duos and duo pluses into Italy last week. That net benefit will be seen here in terms of trees into the ground. The other part that we do, and this is the Australian element, is there is a, 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 battery, a battery stewardship program called the B-Cycle system, which is actually part of the, the Battery Stewardship Council of Australia. When our, when our batteries come into the country, we pay a levy. Those levies are important because they facilitate the appropriate end-of-life recycling programs that need to happen around um, lithium batteries and battery waste. It's also an important story because all, all of a sudden we can see more of a holistic path here. If we bring them in as a business, ultimately we're responsible past the retail transaction. And that's why we believe this is so fundamental. In Australia, this is voluntary. We were the first automotive manufacturers in this country to do it because we believe it's, there's value in it. In Italy, it's mandatory. So when we land those bikes in Italy, we go through, we choose who's going to be doing the program for us, we pay this money just like we would there, this needs to happen because, at the moment, it will go from brand tree to a regulated program very quickly if it's not supported. And um, I'm very short and sweet, but that's me. Does anyone have any questions at all?